Last August 1980 an application was developed by Tim Patterson which changed the technological world forever. It is where everything techies started. The application is an operating system called 86DOS. DOS or DOS means Disk Operating System. In the early 80s, when Bill Gates and Paul Allen was starting Microsoft, they signed a partnership with IBM by selling them an operating system that they don't have, well, yet. We think we have what you need. Now, we know that IBM has set up this place to compete head-on with Apple. And that you're gearing up to come out with a personal computer that will wipe them out. So we can get you an operating system. What kind of operating system? It's called... DOS. But we didn't have anything! I mean, not a damn thing! On May 19, 81, Microsoft bought 86 DOS from Tim Patterson for $75,000 and was used to partner with IBM to develop their personal PC. So basically you're saying you want to buy my operating system? Yeah. They went on to earn billions of dollars for this. 86 DOS was renamed to MS DOS and went through versions 1 to 6. The earlier versions of Windows, up to Windows 3.11, ran within a DOS OS shell. Starting with Windows 95, MS DOS was reduced to a bootloader role. And with the dawn of the Windows NT based operating systems, OS booting has been done through a kernel whose sole purpose is to load Windows, thus eliminating the use of MS DOS for a Windows OS. All Windows versions still packaged the independent DOS prompt though, and later on evolved and became a command prompt, which is not really a DOS OS anymore, but an emulation of it, which can run almost all of the old DOS prompt commands. Alright. Enough with the history lesson. In this one, I'll teach you several cool things that you can do with the command prompt. You might ask, why? There is always a user interface counterpart for all of this, so why do we need to use the command prompt? Well, first reason is the PC resources. Command prompt eats a very minimal resources of your PC. See here on the task manager, the memory used by the command prompt is only 6.4 megabytes and has less than 1% usage of the CPU and GPU. Second, since it has a minimal usage of resources, you are surely having a faster response time for everything that you throw on it, which means faster processing of things compared to the user interface counterpart. Third, the UI here is very basic, which means you can easily copy and paste everything without any hurdles that you might encounter from the UI form. Lastly, you must admit that using a command prompt interface looks way cooler. It is a hacker level badass cool as compared to using a spoon fed style of a user interface. If these reasons do not convince you, then I rest my case, and you should just skip this one and move to my other videos. Otherwise, let's get these keyboard cracking. Okay. First thing to do of course is to open the command prompt. Just search for CMD, then you can open the command prompt readily or choose to open it as an administrator. I will choose as admin here since some commands that I'm going to demo needs administrator rights. Let me first show you the basic commands that I will be using throughout the video. CD is for change directory. CD dot dot goes up one directory, while CD backslash goes to the root directory. Directory is the same as folder by the way. Then CD space folder name lets you go inside that folder. CLS is for clear screen. DIR is for listing all the files within the current folder you are in. Then you can follow any command with a space slash question mark to get help and more information about that command. As an example here, the DIR command can have any of these parameters and there is a description for each parameters and other options for the command. Other commands on the top of my mind is ran for renaming files or folder. Move for moving files or folders. Del for deleting them. And copy for copying files or folders. Let's do a CLS to get a clean screen here. You can also press Alt Enter from your keyboard to have a full screen command prompt, reminiscent of the old MS DOS. When you have a process running, like this dir s for example, which will list all the files from the whole drive C, you can terminate the process immediately by pressing Ctrl C from your keyboard. There you go. The process has been terminated. That's Ctrl C, C as in cat. Let's clear the screen again. Then press Alt Enter to go back to window mode. Now, if you don't feel like moving through the folders using the cd command from the command prompt, you can open Windows Explorer. Then go inside the folder that you want to go. Then on the address bar, type in cmd, then press enter. This will automatically open the command prompt inside the folder you are currently in. See here, the command prompt was loaded inside the same Ribby Trivia command prompt folder. OK. Let's close the Explorer and this command prompt so we can go back to the one with the admin rights. 
Using the command prompt, you can also check your internet protocol or IP details. Just type an IP config without a space. And there you go. You will see all your IP information here including the IPv6, IPv4, subnet mask, gateway and more. You will see your LAN IP address here at the top, along with the subnet mask and other information. At the bottom part are the details of UWLAN or Wi-Fi information. You will also see the media state at the very top. All information can easily be copied by highlighting the text and pressing Enter or Control C and you can easily paste all the information to a text file and any other text-based documents or to whatever you need to use it. Let's do a CLS again to clear the screen. Let me go to another drive here, to drive D. I'm just finding the folder where I store my text file. Let's go inside the TXT folder. Let me just browse the files to see if the text file I'm looking for is here. There is it. Let's CLS again to clear the screen and start with the next item I'll be showing you. By typing type, then space, and a file name, the command prompt will be showing you the content of the file. There you go. By using the type command, you don't need to use a notepad anymore. This will work with any file actually, but of course, it will make more sense to use it on a text file, since any other files, like an exe file for example, will contains gibberish special characters when you browse its contents. Let me open the same text file here on a notepad, so that we can compare the one in the command prompt against the one in the notepad. As you can see, it's the same content from start. And the end of the file. For the next one, you can also use the command prompt to know the user who is currently logged into your Windows system. Just type in who am I, without a space, then space, slash all. There you go. Now you can scroll through the list and find more details about any other user logged into the computer. This will show three lists. The first list is the username and ID. Second is the list of groups, and the third is the list of privilege information, or the access rights within your Windows system. Alright. Let's clear the screen again and move to the next command prompt usage. Through the command prompt, you can also check the connectivity of any site. Just type in ping, then space, followed by the website, like google.com for example. There you go. You can see the site's IP address, the buffer size used to ping them, and the time it took for the site to respond, in milliseconds. Alternatively, if you want to continuously ping a server, you can add a dash t parameter to the command. By the way, pressing arrow up key will bring up the previous commands you executed, which is handy if you don't want to retype a previous command. Let's add dash t here. And there we go, it will continue pinging google.com until you terminate the command by pressing ctrl c. Let's clear the screen again so I can show you how you can take ownership of file or folder by just using command prompt. Let's go to the temp directory of drive d. On this folder we have a PowerPoint file, which we will use as an example to take ownership of, and also use this subfolder for the command later. For example, another user has changed the ownership of the PowerPoint file I've shown you, which as you can see, is inside this temp folder. You can issue the command take own, without a space, then followed by space, forward slash f, space, then a double quoted whole file name. Know what? I'm too lazy to type the whole file name, so I'll just copy and paste it here. There we go. As you can see on the notification message. It is a success, and the file is now owned by the mentioned username, which is me. Now, if you want the ownership of the folder, along with all the files and subfolders within that folder, you just need to repeat the command. But this time, instead of putting in a file name, we will put the full path of the folder as the parameter value. Then follow it with space, forward slash r. There we go. It is now setting the ownership of all the files and subfolders within the given folder. You can see it being executed one file or folder at a time. It's done. Just to give you a better look, we do have several subfolders here, and each subfolders independently contains many files inside. All of these subfolders and files are now set to be owned by me now, by just executing one command from the command prompt. Nice. Alright. Let's do a CLS again for the next item. Issuing the netstat command displays protocol statistics and current TCP IP network connections. It will scan for active connections on your computer, and will then show a relatively simple list of all active TCP connections which, for each one, will give you the local IP address, which is your computer, along with the port it is using, before an IP address of the other computer or network device used, also with the port, and their respective TCP state, which can either be established or closed. Alternatively, you can add dash A parameter to show more information, including the UTP data. The next command will let you see all the installed drivers. Just type in driver query without any spaces. And this will give you the full list of all the Windows drivers installed in your computer. It will have four columns for the module name, which is basically the short name of the driver. The display name, which is the more user-friendly name. 
the driver type, and the link date. This will obviously be a big list since basically all the hardware parts of your computer needs a corresponding driver to make a bridge between the software and hardware communications. Now let's move to some task manager functionalities from the command prompt. To view all the running tasks, you can issue a command task list without a space. And we will have the list of running images, PID or process ID, session name, number of sessions and memory usage. It's like a mini version of the task manager. Let me open the snipping tool here and let's try to terminate it through the command prompt. Let's put the snipping tool window on the right side so we can see it running. Let's issue another task list command. Alright. We now have the screen sketch.exe image here, which is the snipping tool. Let's clear the screen first since it is already crowded. To terminate the snipping tool app, issue a command, without any spaces, task kill. Space, forward slash im, space, and the name of the image, that you want to terminate, which in this case, is screen sketch.exe. You can see the snipping tool window in the right side of the screen. Let's press enter. There you go. The snipping tool has been terminated now, and its window in the right side is gone. Alternatively, you can also terminate a process using the PID value. The command is still task kill, but this time use a forward slash PID, followed by a space and the PID value of the image you want to terminate. It's an error since we used the PID of the snipping tool which is not running anymore. Makes sense. Next item will be using WMIC, or the Windows Management Instrumentation command line, which is a software utility that allows users to perform Windows Management Instrumentation, or WMI operations through a command prompt. To start, let's issue the command WMIC. Here we go. We are now inside the WMIC command line. Now we can issue WMIC commands. And I think the best usage for this is the capability to uninstall applications that you cannot uninstall using the usual Windows uninstall program UI. To do that, we will need to know the program name of the application we want to uninstall by force. So let's issue a command, product, space get, space name. Then enter. This will give you the list of the applications that WMIC command line can uninstall, including those pesky apps that you cannot uninstall normally. Let's use this Epson software updater application as an example. When we search for it from the start menu, you can see it here, which means it is indeed installed in my Windows system. To uninstall that, let's type in the command product, space where, space name equals, then the double quoted name of the program you want to uninstall, which in this case is the Epson software updater, space call, space uninstall, then enter. When asked for confirmation, just type in Y for yes. Then enter again. There we go. Method executed successfully. If there is no issue with the uninstall, the return value here will be zero. If this is not zero, that means it encountered an issue. Let's check and find the Epson software updater again. And we cannot find any application with that name anymore, which just proves that we have successfully uninstalled it using the command prompt. Perfect. Let's do a CLS again. Oops. We are still inside the WMIC command line, that's why it cannot recognize the CLS command. Let's issue an exit command to exit the WMIC. Okay. We're out. CLS should work here now. There we go. Now for the last one in my bag of tricks. We are doing an SFC, space, forward slash, scan now. SFC stands for System File Checker. And this command scans the integrity of all protected system files and replaces incorrect versions with the correct Microsoft versions. The slash scan now parameter just forces the process to run immediately and do a scan and repair task. The scanner is now going through my entire system and checking for any issues that it might have. Once the scan is finished, it will automatically fix for you the issues found as needed. If no issues are found, you'll see a message saying that the Windows Resource Protection did not find any integrity violations. This usually takes an hour or so to finish, that is depending on how fast your machine is, of course. And I triggered this just to show you how it will look like, but I really don't need to scan my system yet, so I'm going to terminate this command now by pressing Ctrl C. And that's basically it for this video. I hope this gives you an alternative, a minimalist way of doing things within Windows. Something that will eat almost no resources, super fast execution, and a hardcore coder type of vibes while doing it. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. No but air.